cleanliness is next to godliness, and in most styles, clear beer is viewed as an asset, an indication of quality process and a brewer's attention to detail. But while the pros have access to all means of mechanical filtration to create their clear beer, us home brewers have, well, we have a few options of our own, and we're going to compare three filtration methods, gelatin, Biofine Clear and Clarity Firm, each with their own pluses and minuses, and through our experiments, point you in the direction of the method that's right for you. This episode is sponsored by Great Fermentations. More on them in a bit. Now, let's get one thing out of the way right up front. There is no sensory difference between beers that have and have not been fined except for differences in clarity. People have concerns about stripping out flavor or aroma through fining agents, and that just does not appear to be the case. Every experiment we'll cover today has returned a non-significant result, meaning when blinded to the variable and when beer is served in opaque cups so participants can't peek and see the beer clarity, tasters cannot reliably distinguish whether a beer was fined versus whether the beer was not fined, and that's regardless of the fining method used. In fact, we have tested the impact of gelatin, just gelatin, in 14 different experiments, and only one time did a test return a significant result. That was for an American IPA, and even then, the brewer themselves could not discern a difference in the beers. The other 13, they were all non-significant. So that outlier aside, there appears to be little to no sensory impact to worry about. It's just about making clear beer. Now, joining me today is Brewlosophy contributor Will Lovell. And before we get into the first experiment, which Will conducted with gelatin fining, I wanted to first ask about a different type of filtration, mechanical filtration. That involves forcing beer through physical media in order to strip it of haze-causing particulates. I personally have never used mechanical filtration. Um, I've seen people use it, I've watched videos, I've heard Brewlosophy contributors talk about it in the past, and if I'm being super honest, it just sounds like a sticky, icky mess, a great way to introduce some oxygen, and not something I'm really interested in doing. I am totally with you there, Will. So let's stick to chemical filtration today, and we'll start with gelatin. So gelatin's a, uh, a very cheap product. You can get it at basically any grocery store. It comes in little, little packets, and you can go buy like just non-flavored gelatin it's also what they use in jello and i guess if we have a, a cattle industry and a, you know an, an animal slaughter industry out there then we can you know consume all the powdered cow bone that we want to delicious now will wanted to test the impact of gelatin by splitting a batch of beer finding only one batch with gelatin and then seeing if anybody could tell the difference and for the test he picked a trendy beer style. West Coast Pilsner, it's not defined by BJCP, so I guess technically it could be anything you want it to be. Um, but it's going to be, you know, the antithetical to the haze craze, probably more in line with the, some other hoppy lagers and cold IPAs out there. And you're just basically, you're going to have this nice, clean malt bill. You're going to have some, some great hop character, uh, some great hop flavor, great hop aroma. And I think that's a great choice, as one of the complaints leveled against gelatin is the potential to strip out desirable characteristics, especially in hoppy beers. So, Will brewed a single batch of West Coast Pills, mashing at 150 Fahrenheit or 66C. He measured out his hop additions and then added them per the hop schedule during a 60-minute boil. The beer was chilled and then it was split between two kegmenters. Then a Northern European lager yeast from Imperial Yeast was added to each batch. And after a couple of weeks, the beers were cold crashed because gelatin works best when the beer is cold and it was time to introduce the variable. So, Will, how did you add your gelatin to your beers? So um, when I use gelatin, I literally go to Google and I look up brewlosophy.com and gelatin. And that's where I go and I get all the proportions for this. And I've done that since before I was brewlosophy contributor and I still can't remember what I do. So I always go back to the website every time. Shameless plug for brewlosophy. I know, but that's legitimately what I do. Um, but what it comes out to, because I just looked it up on brewlosophy.com, is about a half teaspoon and about a quarter cup of water. Um, typically, what I will do is I'll take a you know Pyrex uh, measuring cup. I'll throw it in the microwave with a quarter cup of um, distilled or RO water. I'll zap it for a couple of minutes till it's boiling. I'll bring it out. And then when the temperature gets down, you know, about 170 or so, I'll add in my gelatin, kind of stir it around. And then... Um, Kind of, there's a couple of different ways I've done this in the past. I honestly think the easiest way is that if you take your CO2 purge keg, just pop the lid, 
throw it in there ahead of time and then I'll close the lid back up and then I'll do kind of the, the purge, uh, you know, and then hit the PRV, you know, put in CO2, hit the PRV. It's kind of just a fill purge, fill purge, fill purge. And I'll do that three, four times trying to see if I can get most of the oxygen out. Um, if you're a little worried, you can add a little bit of uh, Camden in there as well because that'll help get the oxygen out as well. Um, and then I'll just trans rack straight in onto that gelatin. The beers were placed in a keezer for a couple more weeks, then we're ready for evaluation. And to me, the difference in clarity is pronounced. One was crystal clear, you could read a newspaper through it. And the other one, while it wasn't, you know, a hazy IPA per se, it definitely wasn't clear enough to start reading through. When you see it, it's that crystal clear with that little, you know, cap of foam on top, it looks super crushable. And the one that wasn't gelatin fine, again, still crushable, still tasty. Um, but just doesn't have that visual appeal, that gestalt that I'm going for. Now, I think this should be of no surprise to anybody who's regularly used gelatin. The stuff just works. And to reiterate, other than the clarity difference, the beers can basically be considered identical. Yeah, we conducted a triangle test. We had 22 participants where each participant was served one sample of the non-fined beer and two samples of the beer fine with gelatin in different colored opaque cups. And as usual with fining experiments, this one came back as non-significant, and Will himself couldn't distinguish the beers in his own tests either. So, a win for gelatin. But what about other fining agents? Well, before we get to those, a quick word on today's sponsor, and that is Great Fermentations. Family owned and operated for more than 25 years, Great Fermentations offers a huge range of brewing supplies and equipment. Great Fermentations are well known for their top-notch customer service, which I can personally attest to. I bought my very first brewing system from these guys, and even though I was a complete beginner, their helpful expertise got me up and running in no time. Great Fermentations offer the ability to custom build your malt bills in fractional amounts, so you're not forced to order full pound increments when you only need a half or a quarter pound of something. And shipping is free on most orders over $59. Check them out at greatfermentations.com. Okay, next up is a vegan alternative to gelatin. So um, while I don't personally have any problem with you using, uh, you know, powdered uh, animal product uh, in my, my beers, um, obviously I do have friends that uh, may have issues with this. I know lots of brewers that are uh, vegetarian, vegan, or just want like a slightly more environmentally friendly uh, option. And so for those out there that don't want to use powdered, you know, cow hoof, there is BioFine Clear, which I can't make it sound any better than saying, use this instead of powdered cow hoof. There you go, BioFine. That's your advertisement jingle for the next year. Uh, you can pay me royalties. So basically, um, BioFine uh, is just a synthetic ingredient um, versus gelatin, which again comes from a natural source. And both of them kind of work in the same way where they have just kind of a positive charge. And so they just attract all these negatively charged ions and they all kind of goop together and fall out. But do they goop together and fall out as well as cow hoof? <laughs> well, while the action of BioFine Clear is similar to gelatin in that it clarifies by attracting and dropping out oppositely charged particulate matter, they differ in polarity with BioFine Clear possessing a strong negative charge while gelatin has a strong positive charge. So we tested BioFine Clear against gelatin in an experiment conducted by Matt Waldron. Matt brewed a big batch of Kolsch under careful supervision, I might add, then split the beer between two carboys. He created a gelatin solution that was one quarter of a teaspoon of gelatin mixed with one quarter of a cup of hot water and added it to one of the carboys. And then to the other one, Matt added one quarter of a teaspoon of Biofine Clear straight from the bottle. The nice thing about Biofine is it's already in a liquid format. You don't have to go microwave it. It's just kind of ready to go. You just kind of measure it out. Uh, you can use the same method I described with gelatin where you just kind of pop the lid, add it into the keg, and then kind of purge the, the CO2 out. And, you know, you don't have quite as much mess and fuss as going through there, getting, you know, microwaving it out, having to get a teaspoon out. So it, it is nice. But how well does it work? Well, in this case, rather well. You'd be hard pressed to find much difference in the clarity between these two beers. Actually, we ran the same test again in a whole other experiment, Biofine Clear versus gelatin with an American light lager. This is the result after one week in the keg. In this instance, the gelatin batch is a little clearer than the Biofine. Two weeks after that, the Biofine Clear was catching up, but it's still a little bit cloudier. And even six weeks later, the gelatin batch is perhaps slightly clearer. 
And I've heard this from a few brewers that gelatin is kind of like the gold standard and biofine clear is pretty good, but it can take a bit longer to reach the same level of clarity. And Biofine Clear does have one other downside. You have kind of a shorter shelf life. It does expire after a while. Gelatin shelf life, it's kind of indefinite as long as you keep it in a, a cool, dry spot. You know, I guess it does eventually go bad, but but how long does powdered horse hoof last really, Martin? Until the end of next year, Will, at least according to my box of gelatin. Now, the final fining method is Clarity Firm, which is an enzyme that breaks down haze-causing proteins, but wait, there's more. A clarity firm is also said to significantly reduce gluten content in beer. Now it doesn't make gluten free beer, but it should produce beer that has less than 20 parts per million of gluten, making it officially gluten reduced. Now Brewlosophy main man Marshall Schott brewed a German pills which he split across two brew bucket fermenters. Then unlike with the other fining agents, the clarity firm was added at yeast pitch to one of the batches. And putting in a yeast pitch is a nice benefit over adding it cold at the end of fermentation, as it doesn't require exposing the finished beer to oxygen. Now in this case, we're comparing one batch with clarity firm against one batch with no finings. And the result was a little, well, underwhelming. The clarity firm batch was perhaps a tad clearer, but both beers maintained a fairly noticeable haze. Now Marshall took things a stage further by adding gelatin to both patches of beers and then checked on them 36 hours later. Oddly, while the Clarity Firm beer was slightly clearer than before, it still maintained more haze than the batch that wasn't fine with Clarity Firm. So how do we sum this up? Well, in our experiments, gelatin produced the clearest beer and seemed to work the fastest too. But it's an animal product and it needs to be mixed with hot water before use. Biofine Clear did an almost as good job and has the benefit of being vegan, but did take a little longer to clarify and is a more expensive option. And Clarity Firm didn't work too well at all, but well, that was just for beer clarity, but perhaps it has the purported benefit of reducing gluten in beer, which might be helpful. I asked Will which method though he prefers. So unless I know that my target audience are friends that are vegetarian, vegan, that kind of thing, I probably still prefer gelatin. Um, if nothing else, I have like a whole box of Knox gelatin that's still sitting out there and like the little individual packets. And so I would like to go through that before I went back and bought a bunch of Biofine. Um, I did go through a phase where I used a lot of Biofine. Um, the one kind of bummer was it was more expensive and really like it expired before I got through the whole big jug of it. So that was kind of the unfortunate part. So what about you? What's your fining agent of choice? Let me know in the comments. Now, another method for improving beer clarity is the cold crash. But what's the best way to employ that step? Well, how to brew author John Palmer had some interesting things to teach me about that. And you can watch that video here.